Happy Monday, Discovery Learners! It is I, Teacher Liz, here with another episode of Ability to Learn from the Discovery Day program. Today, I'll be sharing with you some cool observances, interesting history, cool facts, cool animals, and plants. And let's not forget, there's a new Spanish word to learn and a new place to explore this week. And also, don't forget to log in every day to the live Zoom sessions provided every day by the Discovery Educational Team. Now let's not delay any further, let's start the show. And now for today's observances. Happy Monday Discovery Learners! Teacher Liz here with another list of observances for today. Monday, October 11th, 2021. Starting with National Sausage Pizza Day. Mmm, I love sausage pizza. I like pizza, period. Food lovers across the country enjoy National Sausage Pizza Day on October 11th each year. Whether served on thin or thick crust, sausage pizza goes well with other toppings too. Don't hesitate to add mushrooms and a variety of cheeses. What's even better about sausage pizza are the different kinds of sausage to choose from. While Italian sausage may be preferred, try experimenting. Add more garlic or try additional spice. Try smoky sausages such as chorizo or even calabaza. Or you can maybe visit your local butcher for sausage suggestions. They've probably been smoking up the latest experiment just for you to try out. Sausage come in many combinations too. Lighter forms and different ages offer flavors that complement our toppings. A little sweet with the savory creates a modern taste experience. Sauteed onions add amazing flavor to sausage pizza. While cooking up onions, add a few portobello mushrooms to the pan. Once you've added them to your pizza, sprinkle the top with feta cheese and fresh basil. You won't regret it. Here are some interesting facts about pizza. In ancient Greece, the Greeks covered their bread with oils, herbs, and cheese, which some attribute to the beginning of pizza. In Byzantine Greek, the word pita means pie. The Romans developed a pastry with a sheet of dough topped with cheese and honey, then flavored with bay leaves. The modern pizza had its beginnings in Italy as Neapolitan flatbread. The original pizza used only mozzarella cheese, mainly the highest quality buffalo mozzarella variant. It was produced in the surroundings of Naples. An estimated 2 billion pounds of pizza cheese was produced in the United States in 1997. The first United States pizza establishment opened in New York City's Little Italy back in 1905. Whoa, those are some interesting facts. So how do we observe National Sausage Pizza Day? Well, invite some friends and family over for some homemade sausage pizza. You can either go out or order in from your favorite pizza restaurant that delivers. Do you like sausage on your pizza? And how do you like your crust? Is it thick or thin? Go ahead and let us know in the comment section below. Our next observance is Columbus Day. Columbus Day is on the second Monday in October and is observed in the United States each year. This day signifies Christopher Columbus's arrival to Americas on October 12, 1492. Christopher Columbus was long given credit for discovering North America. However, long before Christopher Columbus was born, Leif Erikson landed on these shores. The Italian-born explorer did sail across the Atlantic though, and more than once. In fact, he made four transatlantic voyages. His first was in 1492. During that 1492 expedition, Columbus was looking for Asia. He and his crew landed their ships somewhere near the modern-day Bahamas. While he may not have discovered an alternate route to Asia, he did spur further exploration and the future colonization of North America. So how do we observe Columbus Day? Well, you could take this opportunity to learn more about Christopher Columbus and his voyages. Our next observance is Native American Day, also known as Indigenous Peoples Day. Native American Day or Indigenous Peoples Day is observed annually on the second Monday in October. 
This day celebrates the cultures and contributions of many Native American tribes. While it's not celebrated in all 50 states, it is recognized in both California and South Dakota and it's gaining rapid popularity in the rest of the nation. In other parts of the country, Indigenous People Day celebrations occur on this day. Events such as traditional dances, art displays, and ceremonies have begun to replace Columbus Day practices. The observance focuses on celebrating the culture, heritage, and history of tribes across the nation. Each diverse nation carries its own traditions, rituals, and beliefs. The day celebrates their knowledge, contributions, and enriching heritage. It is also a reminder of their enduring legacy of strength, energy, and fortitude. So how do we observe Native American Day or Indigenous Peoples Day? Well, you can learn more about Native American cultures, attend events near you, or visit art museums, or read books about Native Americans, buy Native American authors, learn about Native American history, explore the language and efforts to bring lost languages back. So how do you plan on celebrating Indigenous Peoples Day? Go ahead and let us know in the comment section below. Go ahead and comment down below and let us know how you plan on observing, well, these observances for today. On this day in history. Today, in 1975, Saturday Night Live, created by Lorne Michaels, premieres on NBC with George Carlin as host. Saturday Night Live, also known as SNL, is an American late-night live television sketch comedy and variety show created by Lorne Michaels and developed by Dick Ebersol. Michaels currently serves as a program showrunner. The show premiere was hosted by George Carlin on NBC on October 11, 1975, under the original title, NBC Saturday Night. The show's comedy sketches, which often parody contemporary culture and politics, are performed by a large and varying cast of repertory and newer cast members. Each episode is hosted by a celebrity guest, who usually delivers the opening monologue and performs in sketches with the cast, with featured performances by a musical guest. An episode normally begins with a cold open sketch that ends with someone breaking character and proclaiming, live from New York, it's Saturday night, properly beginning the show. Throughout the four decades on air, Saturday Night Live has received a number of awards, including 86 Primetime Emmys, 4 Writers Guild America Awards, and 2 Peabody Awards. In the year 2000, it was inducted to the National Association of Broadcasters Hall of Fame. It ranks 10th in the TV Guide's 50 Greatest TV Shows of All Times list. And in the 2007, it was listed as one of Time's 100 Best TV Shows of All Time. As of 2018, the show has received 252 Primetime Enemy nominations, the most received by any television program ever. Go ahead and leave a comment below and let us know what you think of today's historical events. Notable figures born on this day. Our first notable figure born today is Eleanor Roosevelt. Born October 11th, 1884, in New York City, New York. This is the longest serving first lady in U.S. history and feminist icon who is known for her humanitarian efforts. In her long career in politics, she fought for an expanded role of women in the workplace, the civil rights of African Americans, and the rights of World War II veterans and refugees. Before she was famous, she did volunteer work for New York Junior League and became fluent in French. She unfortunately passed away November 7th of 1962 at the age of 78. But an interesting piece of trivia to know about her is that her uncle was the former president Theodore Roosevelt. Wow, happy birthday Eleanor Roosevelt. Our next notable figure born today is Amitabh. Bakshan. This Indian Bollywood actor has appeared in over 180 films and television episodes. 
He has been called the one-man industry and is regarded as one of the most prominent influential figures in the history of Indian cinema. Before he was famous, he began his entertainment career doing narration for the award-winning film Bhuvan Shaham. He made his Hollywood debut in The Great Gatsby, where he played Mayor Wolfenstein. He turns 79 years old today. Wow, happy birthday, Amitabh. Another notable figure born today is Joan Cusack. Born October 11, 1962 in New York City, New York. This American actress is a sister to John Cusack and she lends her voice to the cowgirl Jessie in Toy Story 2 and Toy Story 3. She also became known for her reoccurring role as Wacky Shayla on the Showtime hit series Shameless. Before she was famous, she studied English at University of Wisconsin. She debuted in Cutting Loose in the year of 1980. She turns 59 years old today. Happy birthday, Jung Cusack. An additional notable figure born today is Rishiki. Born October 11, 1965 in San Francisco, California. Born Salufa Fatu. The Samoan professional wrestler best remembered for his time with the WWE. Before he was famous, he wrestled in Canada and Puerto Rico early in his career. He was also managed by another wrestler by the name of Iron Sheik. And he is a three-time WWE Tag Team Champion and one-time Intercontinental Champion. He turns 56 years old today. Happy birthday, Rishiki! Our last notable figure born today is Emily Deschanel. Born October 11th, 1976 in Los Angeles, California. This American actress who played the anthropologist Dr. Temperance Brennan on the television series Bones. This role earned her four award nominations from 2006 to 2012. Before she was famous, her debut in film was a paint-throwing fur activist. In the movie, It Could Happen to You. She is also the sister to the actress Zoe Deschanel. She turns 45 years old today. Wow! Happy birthday, Emily Deschanel! Happy birthday, everyone! Discovery learners as we explore a new place of the week. This week we are traveling to Madagascar. And do you hear that song in the background, Discovery Learners? Well, yes, that's the Madagascarian national anthem. Now, as you go ahead and give that a listen, let's learn a little more about the Madagascarian flag. This nation's flag consists of a horizontal red stripe over a green stripe with a vertical white stripe at the hoist. The white stripe is said to stand for purity and the red for sovereignty. The green represents the coastal regions and symbolizes hope. The current iteration of the Madagascar flag has been in use since October 14, 1958. Whoa, pretty interesting flag you got there, Madagascar. So let's learn a little more about this nation. Madagascar is located in the southwestern Indian Ocean and is separated from the African coast by the 250-mile wide Mozambique Channel with the Indian Ocean to the east. The official name for Madagascar is Republic de Madagascar, which means Republic of Madagascar. Its head of government is a prime minister. Its head of state is a president. And the form of government is a republic with two legislative houses, the National Assembly and the Senate. The official language of Madagascar is Malagasy, with French at a close second. And the capital of Madagascar is Antananarivo. 
The most common or popular religion practiced in Madagascar is traditional beliefs, with Protestant at a close second. The official currency of Madagascar is the Malagasy Ariare, 3,958 Malagasy Ariares equals 1 US dollar. Madagascar has a total area of 226,756 square miles. That's about 1.4 times bigger than the US state of California. The current population of Madagascar is 28,184,000 people. Wow, Madagascar sounds pretty neat. I don't know a lot about it, but I can't wait to teach you more. So be sure you stay tuned all week long as we teach you more about Madagascar here on Ability to Learn. Wow, now that's a really interesting place of the week. Here is the animal of the day. Today's animal is the sea turtle. Sea turtles are a group of reptiles that can be found in all oceans of the world except the polar areas. Out of seven known species of sea turtles, six are critically endangered. Main factors that decrease numbers of sea turtles are poaching, loss of nesting or feeding areas, accidental catch, ocean pollution, and weather changes, such as global warming. Here are some interesting facts about the sea turtle. Sea turtles are very old organisms. They live on the earth more than 200 million years. They manage to survive weather changes, which kill the dinosaurs. Their body is protected with upper shell called carapaci. Unlike land turtles, sea turtles can hide their heads and legs inside their shell. That makes them more vulnerable when they come out in contact with predators. Sea turtles spend most of their life in the oceans. Females can be seen on the beaches only during nesting season. During nesting season, the female will return back to the same beach where she was born. She will find the right beach even after 30 years of absence. Turtles lay eggs in holes in the sand. These nests can be recognized easily because the turtle covers them with additional layer of sand. Depending on the species, each nest contains around 60 to 200 eggs. Temperature determines the gender of the baby turtles. Females will be born if the temperature of the egg is high, and a male if the temperature of the egg is low. Young turtles hatch during the night, and they use moonlight to find their way to the sea. Too many lights that are coming from the beach or from a nearby road can disorient and confuse the baby turtles. Sea turtles walk slowly on the ground because their flippers are adapted for swimming and not walking. They are excellent swimmers and they can travel large distances. Leatherback turtle can travel 12,000 miles from Indonesia to Oregon. Sea turtles don't have teeth, but their mouths are adapted to each type of food that they normally eat. The green sea turtle is a vegetarian who eats seagrass, while other turtles eat crabs, clams, jellyfish, and sea cucumbers. Sea turtles will grab and eat plastic bags in the water because it looks like jellyfish. This could kill the sea turtle. Sea turtles have lungs and breathe atmospheric air. They spend most of their time underwater, but they need to come up to the surface to breathe in some air. Size of sea turtles is specific for each species. Kemp's Ridley turtle weighs 80 to 100 pounds, while leatherback turtles weigh more than 1,000 pounds. Whoa, that's a big turtle. Sea turtles can hear vibration. They have excellent eyesight and senses of smell. Sea turtles can live from 70 to 80 years. Wow, that's a long time. So what do you think of today's animal? Is it cute? Is it creepy? Go ahead and let us know what you think in the comment section below. The plant of the day. Today's plant is the carnation. The carnation is a flowering plant. There are over 300 varieties of carnations that can be found throughout the world. These plants originate from Europe and Asia. Carnations have been cultivated for at least 2,000 years because of their beautiful flowers and intense fragrance. Carnations require well-drained soil, enough moisture, and direct sunlight for successful growth. 
According to the legend, First Carnation was created from the tears of Virgin Mary when Christ was crucified. These flowers are the symbol of the labor movement and the mother's love in most countries of the world. Carnations symbolize bad luck in France, where they are used mostly for preparation of funeral bouquets. Here are some interesting facts about the carnation. Carnations are herbaceous plants that reach 31 inches in height. Carnation has six long, slender leaves. They are usually grayish or bluish green in color and covered with waxy substance. Carnations produce either one or a couple of flowers, up to five, that are grouped in inflorescences. The natural or original color of the flower is purple pink. Carnations in various shades of white, yellow, orange, red, and green are created by humans. Most varieties of carnations were produced via selective breeding. Blue mauve type of carnation was produced by genetic engineering. White carnations will change its color after adding food coloring to the water. Flower will change its color after 24 hours. Each color of carnation has specific meaning. White symbolizes purity, yellow disappointment, pink, mother's love, red, true love, white, purple, symbolizes capriciousness. The Latin word for carnation is dianthus, which means flower of the gods. Carnations were cultivated as a garden flower in ancient Rome and Greece. White carnations are an evident part of wedding bouquets and banquets prepared for the first wedding anniversary. Carnations are birth flowers for all people that are born in January. These flowers are often used in decoration for tuxedos. Bouquets made of pink carnations are traditionally prepared for Mother's Day. Besides banquets, flowers of carnations can be used as food. They can be consumed in the form of salads, or they can be used as decoration for cakes and other desserts. Carnations are used as flavoring agents in manufacture of beer, wine, and other alcoholic beverages. Colombia is the greatest producer of carnations in the world. Carnations are a national flower of countries such as Monaco, Spain, and Slovenia. They are also considered a symbol of different fraternities and sororities. Carnations can propagate via seed and plant cuttings. Carnations are perennial plants, which means they live more than two years. Carnations also have a long lifespan in the vase. They can remain fresh for up to 14 days after removal from the ground. It's that time again. We just learned about a new plant. So go ahead and tell us what you think in the comment section below. The word of the day. Today's word is apparition it is spelled a p p a r i t i o n it's a noun it means a ghost or ghost-like image of a person apparition our next word is a word you may have heard somewhere in today's episode that word is Tantalizing. It is spelled T A N T A L I S I N G. It's an adjective. It means tormenting or teasing with the sight or promise of something unattainable. Tantalizing. Hola, Discovery Learners. So, y'all, do my extra list. Hi Discovery Learners, it is I, your teacher Liz. Aquí es su palabra en español de la semana. What that means is, here is your Spanish word of the week. Su palabra para esa semana es fantasma. 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 Which means ghost. Fantasma. Ghost. Fantasma. Ghost. You can use this word in a phrase. Blanco como un fantasma. Blanco como un fantasma. Blanco como un fantasma. Which means white as a ghost. Blanco como un fantasma. White as a ghost. 
Blanco como un fantasma. White as a ghost. Go ahead and practice speaking Spanish all week long by saying Blanco como un fantasma, which means white as a ghost. ¿Cómo se dice ghost en español? Fantasma. Sí, muy bien. Hasta la semana que viene, Discovery Learners. Be sure to tune in next Monday to learn another Spanish Word of the Week here on Ability to Learn. Hey, Discovery Learners, it's me, Andrew Lancaster, again with some more spooky season movies to watch this week. And since we're learning about Madagascar, our first offering is Madagascar. This film has a rating of PG. It was made in 2005. It's a family comedy with a 1 hour and 26 minute runtime. It stars Chris Rock, Ben Stiller, Sasha Barra Cohen, and Jada Pinkett Smith. And if you look for it, you'll find it on YouTube. Our next spooktacular film is Little Shop of Horrors. This film has a rating of PG-13 and was made in 1986. It's a musical comedy with a 1 hour and 28 minute runtime. It stars Rick Moranis, Steve Martin, and Bill Murray and is available on Hulu. Our next spooktacular offering is Paranorman. This animated film has a rating of PG. It was made in 2012 with a 1 hour and 33 minute runtime. It stars Anna Kendrick, Christopher Mintz Plasse, Casey Affleck, and John Goodman. You can find it on Netflix. This week's spooktacular cinematic work of art is Labyrinth. This PG film was made in 1986. It's a fantasy musical with a 1 hour and 41 minute runtime. It stars Jennifer Connelly, Brian Henson, and the late great David Bowie as Gareth the Goblin King. It was directed by Jim Henson and the story was by Dennis Lee. It's available on Netflix. Labyrinth. This magical maze made by the amazing Jim Henson and his team is one of the spooky season's greatest family films. Full of twists and turns, hidden images, and amazing puppeteering. Teamed up with a magical score that helps to add another layer to the labyrinth. All this was brought to life by stellar performances by Jennifer Connelly and David Bowie, whose musical prowess helped to make these amazing puppets and creatures created by the mind of Jim Henson become real characters and not just another set piece. As we watch, Jen Connelly tried to save her little brother from Gareth, the Goblin King, who she in a moment of anger gave away to him. Every single twist and turn in the labyrinth was painstakingly designed and created by Jim Hansen and is distinct and different from the last. The intricacy of this is what makes this magical movie a cinematic work of art. Now playing at the Discovery Theater this Friday starting at 1 p.m. Ah, the creatures of the night. What beautiful music they make. You have survived to the end of the episode of Ability to Learn. And I hope you didn't just learn something, but had fun as well. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you are notified when a new video is posted. Because a video a day keeps the boogeyman away. <laughs> This is Teacher Liz signing out. Farewell, Discovery Learners. I will see you next time.